Hey there folks, Dr. Groovy here, GroovyMusicLessons.com, Scott Grove, um, want to give you guys some more sound advice, okay, this is for the basic bands that are just doing, you know, their first gigs, your first two or three years worth of gigs, if it's just local stuff, and you don't need any kind of huge sound, you don't have the iPad mixer, you know, you still have the good old stuff with actual faders and knobs on it, okay. Remember these few things. They're going to be sporadic. They're all over the place. Just because I do still have DVDs for sale on, you know, like called, um, oh, Sound <laughs> sound Reinforcement 101 and so forth. So you guys can still buy those. So I'm not giving away the farm, but you can still find it all if you know who to trust. Okay. Number one, I want to um, remind you all that um, whoever is watching this, um, whoever's the smartest person, actually, in the band, as far as PA stuff goes, let them run it, even if they're not the owner of it, okay? The person who's not going to blow up your gear, let them have at it. If there's a second smartest guy, let them help you if you don't have a sound man, which is usually not going to be in the budget, okay? So, everybody get in there and jump in. I'm going to show you some things that are... Um, definitely do not, some a few definite do's. This isn't going through everything. These are the things that people somehow just miss. Just the little bitty things like, God, I mean, how did I miss that? Okay, number one, do not mix and match speakers, ever. Okay, uh, you got an EV, um, an EV model 1, 2, 3 on this side. And then, this is the mains. And then an EV model 1, 2, 3, it doesn't exist. On this side, watch, somebody will find one from 1932 that had an EV, one, two, three model. Okay, so that's what you got on the mains. And then somebody else, man, there's going to be a few more people there. Where I ought to bring home, you know, bring my PVs from home, and they will daisy chain them off. The, no, <laughs> never mix and match speaker cabinets for anything. I mean, if you are running separate power amps for each component, a power amp for your lows, a power amp for your highs, a power amp for your mids, running through an actual active crossover, uh, if you don't know what any of that means, then definitely do not mix and match anything, okay? So if that is the case, that you do strictly have a cabinet here, a cabinet here, that's the way it's going, and you think you need to add more speakers, you get two more speakers just like them, and if they're both 8 ohms, and they're not hooked into each other, you've actually got a right and a left into separate sides of the power amp, then you could hook another identical one to each one, bring it down to four ohms um, per channel of the power amp. No matter what your um, directions say that come with anything in the world, if it says, hey, yeah, and here's your wattage at two ohms, don't do it, okay? Especially entry-level gear. Nothing is meant to run at 2 ohms. It's just not a good thing to do. Uh, when in doubt, just 4 ohms, everything's running fine. It's real comfortable at 8 ohms, but, you know, 4 ohms is pretty much where everybody runs it. So, two 8 ohm cabinets jumped into each other, brings it down to 4 ohms, call it a day. But don't mix and match. Here's a PV, here's a, a EV, and an EV, and a PV, and a, a Yamaha hooked together. No, never. Same with, um, it's, it's just a disaster. You know, you EQ for one set of speakers, the other set is going to be so off that your hearing, your hearing is going to be going, I don't know why it's doing this. Just avoid it because you're only going to be EQing your EV cabinets, the ones that actually sound good. And then the other ones are going to just sound like rat's ass and it's going to create a real problem. You don't have a separate... EQ for them, and you would never want to run a separate EQ for those. Um, same goes for your monitor wedges. If you have, like most people would, like only two monitor mixes, make sure you have on like monitor mix number one with your EQs, two identical monitors if you're going to run two of them. You know, for the two people that need the same basic thing in their monitors that you guys have figured out. Well, I need to hear the guitar and the bass player singing over here. so. Yeah, man, this guy will get that monitor mix, and then the drummer and lead singer will get this other mix. Um, those can be two EVs over here on that power amp and that mixer, or that side of the power amp, and that EQ, I meant to say, not mixer. And the same if you have two PVs over here that are identical 
on the other side of the power amp and its own EQ, that's fine, you know, because you're not mixing and matching on the same equalizer and on the same channel of the power amp. It's just asking for trouble. So that is a huge one. Just don't ever do it, even if you're like, man, I've got this uh, gem sound monitor I've been using since 1978 and I just have to use it. That's all I have to use. It's like, well, take the speaker out and use it for a shit house because you're not putting it on this stage. You know, it's just, it ain't gonna happen. And so that is one huge, 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 huge thing. Um, to repeat myself, again, if they're on sticks, speaker stands, make sure the horn is at least seven feet in the air so it clears the entire room. Everybody can hear it instead of walking and not you walking in front of it, but anybody dancing by on low cabinets and they walk in front of the horn, nobody back there can hear anything. So always put your cabinets way the hell up there, especially if all you have are speakers on sticks. That's just the terminology. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about as far as all that junk goes, if um, you go to play somewhere and you know you have to play soft, or say you have to turn down, because everybody will tell you to turn down because it's live music. They hired a live band, yet they don't want to really hear you. Go figure. Have, honest to God, have one channel somewhere. I don't care if you bring in a, another mixing board and it's not plugged in that has three channels, like a or like a one-channel uh, Mackie mixer or anything. Just write master volume on it very big and just... Just have a fader or a big knob on the wall that is made out of a tin foil over top of a cereal bowl or something pasted to it and it says volume and just kind of turn it. Just if they see you turning something or pushing it up or down, they will think you, oh, that's better. Okay. It never fails. So just say, you know, have a fader there that says blow me or whatever and then just move it and, you know, bring it way down. Let them see you do it. They'll go, yeah, it happens every single time. Okay, there's this thing called drums. If they say you're too loud, um, everything has to do with dynamics. You do not have to turn down in order to please the people. And I'm going to tell you why I'm telling you this is because your sound has already been set. And there are certain things that are going to happen. If you take the actual master, which I'll show you over here in a second, and you just take the one that says, you know, that you put it all, say you put it all on just, I don't care if you have different subgroups or what, but if you just take your master volume fader and bring it down, it doesn't work the way you think it It doesn't take everything down evenly, okay? It will take everything that is direct, like um, keyboards, acoustic guitars, um, all that stuff that's just, you know, plugged in through a direct box. Um, so... All that stuff, it will take down really fast. Um, but microphones and things like that, it takes it down slower. It's just the nature of the beast. You know, a direct line level signal, meaning a keyboard or whatever, will go down really quick in volume, even if you're just turning down the master. It does not do everything at the same time. So use dynamics instead. Now here's the other thing. Why I'm telling you this kind of stuff is because it's, the stuff that nobody else is going to remind you of. You've got it mixed. It sounds good. Now, if everybody just plays lighter and you did the fake out on the volume thing, here's what people don't understand. They always go right for the drums and shut them off. No, holy cow. Um, drums, unless they're electronic, they always sound beautiful. I know drummers hate me for saying that, but that's the easiest way to get by with your drums always sounding great through the PA especially at low level things, is to have an electronic kit or be triggering your acoustic kit, which is filled with foam. But I hate to say it, but that's the way the world is, kids, when you get bigger and whatever, and then bring your big kit. But if in the meantime you have the acoustic drums sounding good, um, either get a different drummer. If he says, no, I'm not using dynamics to make the place happy, or, <laughs> again, um, you got to make it happen because if you sit there and play drums blah, 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 and it's not mic'd up, it honestly sounds like total crap. So here's the thing that most people cannot get past, ever, 
ever, ever. It just blows my mind. It's happened my entire lifetime. And for people not to understand this, it's just mind-blowing. It really is. Have I, have I said anything about blowing? <laughs> um, an acoustic kit that is not mic'd in a live situation sounds like shit. There's no other way about it. A kick drum, is, it might sound great in your bedroom. Just like your guitar amp sounded great in your bedroom and you put everything together and now it sounds like crap out live and now you gotta change everything. Same thing. It's the bass drum that's gonna make him dance, but it doesn't have to be loud. It's the sound reinforcement that is making everything sound good. So the drums should still be coming through the PA, even if you are told to turn down. Don't turn jack shit down, just play softer. That is all. Play with dynamics. Okay, you, you guys know how to do that. Everybody knows how to play softer, even drummers. Again, if they can't or won't, fire his ass. Um, but his kick drum is always going to get people on the dance floor, even if he's barely kicking that thing, because it's coming through the PA, and it's full, instead of just being shut off, and sounding like he's kicking the front end of an oatmeal box. You understand where I'm coming from? It's because you shut it off in the mains. It doesn't mean that it's going to get just quieter. It's just going to lose everything. Okay? You can still turn the radio down and still hear every instrument and it's EQ'd great. Think of it that way when you're playing live. You still want everything EQ'd great. You don't want to take anything out of the mix. Just lower the volume. Just so that the acoustic drums and the amplifiers on the guitar never let an amplifier cover a room. If you walk in front of a speaker, it sounds different to everybody. If you come over here, again, if people are dancing, or if it's pointed from the side of you over that way, they're not hearing it. Everything goes in the mains, period. Everything you have go is coming out of the mains, period. <laughs> That's the way it is. Um, any other way is you're just being a fool. Because everything will sound perfect if you EQ'd it just right out front. And what's the awesome thing that nobody will believe me again, but it is true. Um, I'll give it a good 90% of every gig you play from there on. If you guys leave your crap on the same settings, even on your entire sound system, monitors, mains, blah, 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 from gig to gig to gig, you might end up with a 5 to 10 minute sound check if you keep using the same gear and leave everything right where it's at. Don't go around changing crap. Because when it sounds good, it sounds good, you might have to go in and only EQ the mains just a little bit, just for the room. But you won't know until the place fills up. It's going to sound completely different when people are there than when it's not. Okay, so have whoever's got the wireless walk out front when there's people there. And just by logic, when people there are there, usually they soak up the highs right away. Uh, bass whether, you know, just bass in general, is all-encompassing. You don't have to worry about it. But highs and mids are very, very particular. But again, if you put them over top of people's heads, you generally do not have to worry about them at all. But people will soak them up if you get a good crowd, just a little bit. So you might want to take everything from like 4K on your EQ and just bump it up, not even, you know, a dB, just... Just a slight little curve up there, and then it's fine. Then when people start to leave there, then you just bring them down just a tiny bit. And that's it from gig to gig to gig to gig. If you can discipline yourself enough to do that. I, on my amplifiers, I haven't changed one knob since the day I programmed everything in them. Volume, nothing. It's always been exactly the same. And it's beautiful because it's all, you know, the modeling, digital crap. But nobody can ever accuse me of changing anything because it's perfect. It's always in the same spot. It's always pointed directly at my head. Therefore, my stuff doesn't sound different in a different room. Because I knew well enough to put it at a certain place at a certain angle. I know where my ears are. The sound kind of comes this way. It doesn't come... You don't have ears on your butt or on the back of your shins. So I have speakers down there pointing at your butt or at your... So you see what I mean? Keep it all in the mains like it should be, just like you hear it on the radio. Um, when, when you turn the volume down on the radio, you don't lose anything. Um, it all goes down with the same thing, so just have the band 
be um, professionals and just chill on your playing and let it sound great instead of degrading everything, messing up your next sound check, two, screwing up all your monitors, just totally defeating the fun you could be having even though you have to hold back a bit. Big whoop. Everything's still going to sound great out front. You just use your dynamics and have a great time. Okay? The drums are going to sound full even though they're not loud. They're not going to sound like, you know, a Walmart drum kit. And that's that would be like you playing that in the middle of, you know, the Super Bowl. It's just going to be crap. And that's what it would sound like. It honestly does. I don't know how some bands do it, but... Um, Best advice I can give you right there. Okay, I'm taking the camera off here just to show you a couple things. Hopefully we'll save some of you guys. And I am not going out bringing any of the big gear in. I'm using basic little tiny bull crap to um, let you know things. Okay, yes, I've been rehashing stuff here. Mainly so I can get in here and uh, play the pedal steel again. And actually have things where I can get to it. Took the big pedal board out because there's no reason for it. Um, <laughs> everything's built into those amps and if they're not then there's 3,000 other effects down there. Okay, there's something, let's say you're using, this is actually an old Tascam 2488 um, recorder. Has a, burn the disc right here and pop it out, you know, the old way. I prefer to actually record on here way more than recording on my computer, but I'm an old dude. There's something called Unity Gain if you have a mixing board that has faders instead of knobs. Okay, so let's examine the fader situation. It's right here where it says zero. So you've got minus, 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 and all the way at the bottom is whatever. So you've got zero on up. When you actually start to start actually getting all your gain together. You can look at other people's videos and get this all down. There is the uh, old old school way and the new school way. But the new school way is going to be the old school way when the uh, all the iPad mixing stuff is out and all this stuff is gone. You're actually supposed to start with every single fader at unity gain or zero. And then have your gain, the knobs at the top that start clipping, um, to bring, start bringing those up um, to get, you know, your best sound. Uh, we used to do it the old way, which I just won't even tell you how anymore. But don't forget, anytime you increase um, your lows, your mids, your highs, all that stuff, increases that gain and would uh, make your clip light want to come on therefore you have to bring that gain down okay so that's why um, they just want everything here to start here and basically never change okay um, the, the reason behind all this stuff is once you set the gain and you guys are there and you're done and you're happy with everything Okay, if you're not using a separate monitor mixer, and I'm sure you are not, um, you've just got basically got what you have. If you change the gain or the trim, yes, trim is another word for the JJ. Um, if you change that, it changes your monitor at the same time. So if you're like, oh, I, his vocal's too loud, I'm going to bring it down, or his vocal ain't loud enough, I'm going to turn it up. That turns it up or down in the monitors at the same time, and you're going to cause all kinds of chaos. So whoever does that is the dumbest shit in your band. Anybody who touches that after it is set is a complete moron. It is against the rules. Once it's set, it stays there forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Right there. Okay? So you get your EQ on there. Everything's still here. Stays at unity gain. So everything's at zero. All the way across. Yes, that's the way it is. Period. That's the way, that's the law. That's the way sound is ran. <laughs> Period. Um, there's not like, well, Dad used to do, yes, because, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that dad used to run the Hi-Fi in the old 32 Ford pickup. Again, once your gain is set, you don't touch it. It does everything, 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 and affects everything. Okay? So, again, if they say, oh, the band's too loud, do not turn this down. Because then, every gig, then you're going to have that way down here. I know you guys have done this. I'm not a dumbass. <laughs> no matter, contrary to what you heard. And you don't put that down there to turn the band down. Just have the band play softer. Or, if you have a real PA and you have an active crossover, you go over there and just, you know, turn down the actual outputs on the crossover. That's the only other real way to do it. If the band can't handle it on their own or bring it down, you guys shouldn't be playing. And then I see people, they turn this down and think that's getting everything at one time. No, again, all the instruments are going to disappear, but anything that's actually got a microphone will stay in the mix. Everything else will be gone. So your keyboards will be gone. Your acoustic will be gone. But you'll, st you'll still have some vocals. That's it. <laughs> okay, and it's not fair to anybody to not be heard. Um, and then they start turning these up, and then all of a sudden they're at the very top. And then you got to go back and scrap everything. Uh, we got to go back this week. And okay, we got to start with that back up at zero again. Then start bringing things up just a little bit. No. <laughs> that is the old way. That's why it doesn't do that now. So everything stays at unity gain. Um, and you do not change anything. You've got a slight boost there for solos and so forth. Is it enough? Yeah, if you're running it this way, you've got, believe it or not, just from here to up here. That better be enough for flipping solos if you have a sound guy. Because that's the way it's done everywhere all over the world. Again, unless you're 80 or 90 years old and you just don't know how to actually run this stuff. Also, on any things that have effects built into your mixer, unless they actually, I mean, say it's something you just turn a knob and or just select an effect and then turn the knob up and all of a sudden you have this reverb going on and that's it it's just a knob that has um like this stupid thing okay or this whichever one's easiest it doesn't matter so you pick an effect from over here at this thing and then you turn an effect knob up and that's it um don't do that <laughs> Uh, if that's all you have, you might add a little something. But what you really need to do is have an outboard effects unit. Even like this little old PV Univerb from way back. Anything, all reverbs all the way back to the beginning of mankind are fine if you want reverb. But you have to go out of one of your sends. Okay, not your monitor sends, <laughs> your effects sends. And then come back into a channel because you will want to EQ your effects. You don't want to leave them to what's built in. That blows dog. It really does. With reverb, you just want some high end sprinkled in on the reverb. You don't want all this low end that's going to muddy everything up. It is crucial that you run it into its own thing. So you have reverb there. You have delay here. And guess what else you have? You have a foot switch somewhere so that between songs, <laughs> foot switches, you hit it and it shuts them off. Never talk when you have effects on. That's crucial as well. It's very easy to just grab a, uh, those little foot switches that people use for their cheap little keyboards. Those are the big ones there, but you know they make those little square ones. But um, it'll just be a momentary foot switch. You turn on and off your effects. When you're talking to people, turn your effects on or off. And when you're singing, you can have some heavy-duty effects that sound great. But they're only going to sound great if you can EQ them. Take the bottom end off of them. Put a little bit of mids in there for intelligibility. And then especially for reverbs, that real nice high end, again, from about 6K on up, is going to be plenty. Everything below that is going to sound um, really muffled like garbage. And nothing will sound crisp and clean. Um, I don't know if you've noticed it, but in the past about 40 or 50 years, nobody's ever put reverb on their vocals, live or on a record. It used to be the big thing in country music back then, but, you know, people still use delay, but I still like them on drums, on ballads, and, you know, some vocal stuff. So, again, get um, a couple of outboard effects, 
and give them their own channels. Okay, that's a must. Okay, when you have equalizers, again, I'm just using what is available to me right here. Say that's your main EQ and it's 31 bands. Start with it flat. If you have um, the frequencies, of course, below this, you, you can use 60 and a little bit of 50. But if you don't have any subs, okay, um, everything like 50 and below, 50, um, 30, 20, shut those completely off. Completely. It's just wasting power on your um, power amps because it can't deliver those frequencies to your speakers if you got just, you know, a single cabinet there. So if you don't have subs, take everything, you know, like from, you know, 60 will be about your lowest. And you can maybe put 50, say that's 50, bring it down like this, but then everything below that 30 and 20, shut them off. Um, lots more clean power. Okay. And let's see. Also, remember folks, uh, when it comes to speakers, um, there are bad, bad companies, speakers and power amps, like um, this stuff here, Crappinger and um, PV nowadays since boneheads running it um like i can't remember what they it'll say on the back of here but i think they call this um it, it's funny but you'll see stuff then they put the peak power on it so they'll they'll say that is 1000 watts okay no that's 1000 watts peak divide that in half that will give you the program wattage which is 500 watts that is still not the real wattage divide that number in half to 500 watts that gives you 250 watts rms that's what you always want to go by so find the rms rating always go by that um again oh it'll sometimes say continuous but rms never go for the peak or the program find out what it is rms it's always easy if you find that peak thing because most companies are getting like that again pv and behringer both are really bad at that They'll say you're getting a um, 5,000 watt amp. And they will say that about this. Cut it in half. That'll give you a program thing, which is 2,500. Cut that in half. You know, you get 1120, um, yeah, 1125. So you, you cut it down real quick. But then you want to double the power of the power amp that's pushing them. So say you have two speakers out front that will handle 200 watts RMS each. You want to put about close to 400 watts RMS of power into them. You're not going to run them at full power. Um, that doesn't has nothing to do with the big volume knobs on the front. Those are not volume knobs. You just run those on 10. Those are gain knobs. They are not volume knobs, people. Um, a lot of companies take those knobs off the front because you don't need to turn them down. <laughs> those are not volume knobs on the front of your power amps so again you have you double the power going to your speakers because you're going to be using all that clean headroom and you're not going to push it the full 200 watts rms that each speaker can handle because you've got a limiter on there or a compressor that will keep you from even getting there if you see clipping anywhere uh, back its butt off but again it is the rule I don't make these things up. It, it, it is the rule. Okay. And also, when doing EQs, again, say it's a 31 band, okay? Uh, you got all the junk turned down. You can leave the high end up. You're never going to hear 20K anyway. It's always, the thing that's always going to feed back in your monitors is going to be uh, 2K is where it's going to start. Then um, oh, 4K is going to feed back like a bitch. Then there's going to be a 6.3 that really feeds back. And this here up here is where you get your uh, syllabants, your and your hi hats and all that stuff. You don't want that out of the main, so don't shut your drummer off. But don't, at almost any cost, don't boost anything. Cut. Okay, you're gonna have frequencies like 125 really sucks. Always, you can just always to cut it. Um, there's uh, 630. It's not on here, but 630 hertz really sucks automatically dip it out it's going they're going to be the first ones to ring and they just naturally sound horrid um you'll be able to learn as you go but just because you need more bottom end in the pa don't start grabbing low end faders on the pa and cranking them up no that's where you actually have you just need more juice 
and the bottom end, whether that means you need to buy extra subs or whatever, but you don't start boosting crap like that, you're going to blow crap up. Again, your EQs are there um, to cut, you know, frequencies that you're having trouble with, not to boost and boost and boost and boost. It's not a preamp. That's an equalizer, okay? There was a day back in the old days that we all had what was called the PV smile, PV gear. Everybody ran all their EQ like this, so it looks like it's a big smile. Lots of bass, then scoop the mids like a heavy metal guitar player, then it comes back this. Yes. So now it sounds like a DJ from the 70s. This is WNDE, Woody 1260, your number one music station. But that's what it sounds like, you know, no, no balls. You know, but no, don't do that. Um, again, it's there to cut, you know, again, if you don't have enough bottom end going on, buy bottom end, buy a sub, okay? And a lot of times when your subs aren't loud enough, then it means your top end is just simply too loud compared to it. This is when you're running a separate EQ. I mean, sorry, it's a, a, a crossover, an electronic crossover. So uh, a lot of times people think, that, oh, I need more and more and more and more bottom end. It's like, let's get rid of some of that top end, you know, but not to the point where it's muddy, but just how much bottom end do you need? And don't get it from your equalizer. Get it from the proper amp and from the proper speakers. Okay, um, that's basically all I'm going to give you right now since this will upload before it gets up to 4 gig and then I have to split it and it'll take all night. But again, just remember all that little bitty stuff and um, everybody always says, everybody, let's all use the exact same microphones. Best microphone in the world right there. The EV ND767A. It'll be any shirt, any day of the week. It just... The, the closest thing to a great condenser mic as you can get. But EV actually makes uh, microphones that are tailored, custom tailored, just like some pickups for certain peak frequencies, but they're custom tailored for female vocals. Hey, did you know that? Yeah. Certain mics for certain jobs. Um, so, uh, the majority of you, yeah, nobody's going to sing like everybody else, so... There's no problem with everybody having different mics, but don't get anything that's impossible to mess with, like your SM58 that you've had for 76 years. You know, the the element inside does go bad. <laughs> and it does get caked up with what's called smegma from your spit and all that stuff. But honestly, that's best buy you can make, and it will actually come a little cheaper than the basic old sure crap. Okay, that's about it for me for right now. Yes, that's actually an electric uh, kalimba from Ac Africa. Uh, some people call it a thumb piano, but yeah, I had to get one with a pickup in it. If you don't know what it is, um, hey, get one. Have fun. I'll teach it next. But once again, Dr. Groovy, as it says here and here and here. I'm getting my groovy stuff everywhere. And lots of things getting ready to happen. Lots of doctoring going on and... Hey, we're getting there. I don't know where there is, but hey, take those tips and munch on them. I know a lot of them are totally against anything you've ever thought or whatever, but why would I lie to you? I have no reason to. I want you to sound great. I'm, I'm never here to destroy your gig, you know, again, why would I? So just take some of that to heart. I'll be back with plenty more of it. Um, just remember these basic things along with everything else I'm going to continually throw at you. And you guys just have a groovy time. Okay, talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.